uh, we've already had one mentioned, and that is Lee Harvey Oswald. I read uh, the book on it, and I'm taking it, setting it up to take it to the uh, uh, pardons attorney, attorney for pardons in Washington. Here's the case, and the, the evidence is so strong, I think, that he's, he's got to do something. And that's another thing, they've got to do something with it. It's like the government, when you walk in and you file something, they can't just let it sit there. They've got to receive, process, and so on. And I'm really thinking we're going to make some progress. We also have a petition for a pardon from the governor of Texas. Now this is regarding Billy Saul Estes, who you've heard about. I love the story they tell about uh, how he was involved with the murder in, uh, in Texas back in 61, ruled a suicide. <laughs> 1984, it goes back to the grand jury. The grand jury said it was murder. Lyndon Johnson was involved. Ooh, very good, you guys are, or you got guys are calling, calling it what it was. Of course, the defense says, well, you can, you know, you can take a ham sandwich to the jury and then a grand jury and they'll indict him. <laughs> Lyndon Johnson, folks, was not a ham sandwich. I mean, if you know you're looking at Lyndon Johnson, you're thinking pretty heavy about who we're talking about here now. So anyway, all, the, all these cases are falling together. But the big one, I think, may just turn this whole thing over is uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. I mean, if we get a pardon and the circumstances being that what happened, he's innocent. <laughs> think about the rest of the cases they have. I mean, they become, well, they disappear. Uh, on the other hand, all is not just insults. On the other hand, there are a lot of people that deserve honor. I mean, they really perform beautifully. Um, the, the USDA auditor who was investigating Estes, for example, murdered. The one that they said Lyndon Johnson was probably involved. He deserves a medal. He refused to accept a big job in Washington to prompt the investigation to go home, leave us alone. I mean, this keeps the case alive, this, and, it, and it's tough. But he was, he was committed to America, I mean, a good patriotic American. And you can't just let that be ignored. U.S. Marshal uh, that investigated the case also deserves a medal. Well, they tried to get rid of him. He wanted to be in a movie. He was just making up all this stuff. <laughs> Let's try that again. In fact, there are three federal judges that say about the marshals, whether you get hired, fired, promoted. And his case was taken by an LBJ appointee to the three federal judges. He explains how he should never have taken this to the grand jury. Mm -hmm. um, grand jury has spoken, but he should be fired for doing it. Well, Clint said, go ahead and say all you want to. And when Barefoot had finished doing his talking, <laughs> Clint had the moral turpitude, shall we say, to explain what was going to happen if they fired him. Well, the other two judges who had to rule on the case, both of them thanked the marshal for the great service he was doing, and both had to leave for an airplane. So, in the case. And you don't know about these things, though, but they're the kind of things that really contribute uh, to solving this case, and, and are really courageous. So, we're going to ask them about that. And, uh, and it's a petition. You petition for a, a, a gold medallion from the, uh, from the president. Well, we could go to Congress, but you've got to get two-thirds majority from the House and the Senate. I ain't going there. Um, and finally, and I've mentioned this already, uh, what's been going on lately has been an effort 
to rehabilitate the unrehabilitable, unrehabilitable Lyndon Johnson. I mean, they're trying to say he was a great civil rights leader. Oh. They're trying to say all these other things. And he wasn't. And every time they do that, though, they diminish John Kennedy. John Kennedy was taken to leadership in civil rights. John Kennedy was really, really working hard for peace. Uh, John Kennedy was a good man. Yeah. Lyndon Johnson, well, he started, I think, doing something to dogs, and I think of you all. He, he went from there. He was a mean man, and he doesn't deserve what he's trying to get. And he's getting it over the body of John Kennedy, which is absolutely wrong. So we're taking this to Congress. I am to amend the ethics for government employees. And we want disclosure. We want integrity. Uh, we don't want you guys, you know, making more than you agreed to make. And try and get the existing laws, which are good, to make them apply. <laughs> We're going to apply it to elected officials. <laughs> and we're going to ask them to change it so that, in case you don't know, if you lie to a federal employee, crime, you're going away. We want it to be for the federal employees, including the congressman. If they lie to us, they're in trouble too. And it's just a little equality, but it comes back to the integrity that I mentioned earlier that you guys are so good at. We are. You know, they're trying, they're even trying to change the story of George Washington. Nah, he never chopped down an apple tree. Well, it may have been a peach, but he did chop down a tree. He did get in trouble, and he did something about it. And besides that, it's a real good rule. Uh, so these things, after I've looked at this case and gotten enough together to see what we can do, is to do it. And I laid out and I call it an order of order for trial, really all these steps that I've mentioned. And just see what happens. Because there's a nice event coming up right now. It's gonna be John Kennedy's hundredth birthday. And I'm sure you've heard it May 29. And I think we have the time here to get it done. And particularly with the book and the leadership. And we'll be going down the uh, we, it's in the basement of the uh, Department of Justice. <laughs> we'll see how we, how we go in and how we come out. Um, but the big thing and, 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 and is the movie. Because you really, really, really got to get into the emotions of these things. And I've been working with a couple of guys. Bob Dorf, some of you may know him. He was a, he was a friend of um, the guy on the House investigation into the assassination and um, he said well how are we going to tell it I said we're going to tell it one way the way it was now the emotions are there the emotions just leap out at you and let me tell you one other thing about the story that I figure best explains it I mean we have stories of all kinds but there was a Greek story about a king who kills his daughter so he can get a fair wind. Okay. Oh, he comes back and the rule of revenge goes to work. The mother kills the father. Well, that leaves the next in line, the son. What's he going to do? He's got to kill his mother. Well, these things finally, you know, sort of seep into the thinking they're a little bit stronger than we need. So instead of, instead of him having to kill her, it was decided, first of all, that no vengeance was needed on the dead king except that he was out forever. His reputation was ruined. And on the other hand, um, we'd go on with life as it should be, uh, supposedly having taken care of justice. In other words, you got to quit killing people. Um, and what happens then is I can bring Gordon in U.S. Marine, 
outstanding, outstanding guy, international financier and all this other stuff. He'll tell you. He'll be on a little later today. But he can come like an arc across this story that can be written as it should be. And maybe just bring home a few things that are being overlooked, including John Kennedy. So these are all in the works. Um, let me see. I warn you. We have run into I've run into this phenomenon of talking to someone and all of a sudden realizing, hey, we think the same way. Well, this happens with Gordon. I'm talking to him and he figures out well maybe we're representing the Blitbergs. <laughs> Somebody's got to do it. I mean, you just don't have a, a, a big group of powerful men doing everything. He was working for the banks. What is I doing? Well, I did something that no one else has really done, and that is get a bonus for my former law partner, Ed Clark, in the form of an oil well. Exxon, okay, Rockefellers, who else do you need? You're coming up with the top guys and the money and the, and the power in the country. Jack Worthington, the one I mentioned that could point out to me how his family was involved in moving uh, weapons and people. <laughs> what he did was work in the construction industry, which is huge. So I'm really, really hoping that we open up some doors that are very, very difficult to open and make it impossible not to crack the conspiracy. Besides, they lost anyway. There's 70% of us. 10% of them, the other two are willing to listen, the other 20%. <laughs> so we gotta thank Judith too for all the work she does and makes all this possible. <laughs>